Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Um, and the author, let me thank Dr. Rajiv Chawla, Dr. Shalini Jaggi and the team for inviting me. And it's a pleasure to speak in his presence. He an extremely nice and a modest person who encourages everyone. So yes, it's, it's a pleasure to speak as Chawla and Chawla in the chairpersonships of Gupta and Gupta. So let me start by sharing the screen. Okay, so we had a wonderful talk and presentation from Dr. Rajiv Chawla <clears throat> about the weight aspects and you know what really leads to weight gain and, and how strategies to weight loss come across various roadblocks and challenges and hence our need to understand um, what those challenges are when we start treating our patients with issues with being overweight or obese. I'm going to go a step earlier and then start with talking about the means of assessing and actually diagnosing obesity. What is the newer understanding of grading for obesity as compared to the earlier one, which was staging, which was based purely on BMI. And today we understand that we need to go maybe beyond just BMI means of assessing. I do have a contract with no notice for today's presentation. The objective is to understand that BMI what is the BMI approach to assess the cl classification? That's just based on your BMI, how what we've been doing so far, and that's how we classified people as normal weight, overweight, and grades of obesity. But then let's look at the EOS, which is the Edmonton Obesity Staging to assess obesity, and then some practical case studies to understand how this newer means of classifying an individual as obese, um, how it differs from what the earlier BMI means was. So initiating obesity management with your patients has three major steps. And the most important there is to diagnose your patient correctly. And then of course, to discuss the aspects of different therapies that you're offering and then to treat the patient. So let's start with diagnosing. How do I diagnose it? So far, it's been the BMI. What is BMI? BMI in kg per meter square is an individual's weight in kilograms divided by height in meter scale. It's an objective measure that can be used to diagnose obesity. And as I said, that's been the only means we've been doing. And yet we should continue looking at the BMI. In fact, it should be addressed at every mm -hmm. clinic visit. A lot of today electronic uh, 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 health record software has, of course, have everything automated. The height doesn't change for an adult. You put in the weight and every time, when you're putting in the weight, the BMI numbers will keep coming onto your screen and the system. But recording that, hello, is there a problem? Okay. If no, no, please continue. No, no, please continue. Okay, okay. So, we also then know that the BMI parameters to define obesity have also been adjusted. Um, may I request the IT person to mute some of the others who are not speaking? Thank you. <clears throat> and there is an India-centric BMI where the cutoffs have been adjusted, keeping in, in mind that Indians and Asians will have a lower BMI to be in that same uh, uh, stage of, of obesity. So to define obesity, you have a BMI of more than 25 kilogram per meter square. You're looking at the waist circumference, more than 90 centimeters in men, 80 in women. Right. Waist hip ratio. All right. You look at the waist hip ratio in men. Question, why don't you mute everyone, please? <clears throat> in men, it would be 0 0.9, in women, 0 0.8. And then you look at, start looking at body fat percentage. You have a lot of scales and machines, right, from simple ones to a little more sophisticated, which allow you to measure the body fat percentage and more than 25 in men and more than 30% in women will consider uh, as, as putting that individual in the obese class. You also look at the, the classification here based on BMI in adults, less than 18.5 for Indians would be underweight, 18.5 to 23 would be normal weight, 23 to 25 is overweight and above 25, you will see the grades of obesity, grade one from 25 to 30 
be great from 30 to 35 and great as more than 35. In children, of course, you go by percentiles. And, and remember that if the BMI is more than 95th percentile for age in children, that would be considered obese. And this is important because we unfortunately are dealing with a lot of childhood obesity and hence the need for having these conversations even at, at, in schools today to prevent childhood obesity and early type 2 diabetes. With only BMI, we do ignore the normal weight obesity. And let's understand why the need to move beyond BMI. So if you're looking at that, you will realize that a lot of people who would be considered as normal weight would, would also be obese. If you're going to be looking at just the BMI, you'll miss out on a fraction of people who have normal BMI, but they are obese because they have high body fat percentage and, and so on. Which is where it raises the question, is there something like healthy obesity? And it's time for us to understand that, that BMI, if you look at it, will, 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 will you know, have moved from the spectrum of normal weight to obese. But you also need to look then at the individual's metabolic status. Who will be considered as metabolically healthy? But somebody who is met, has no other metabolic uh, conditions and has normal weight. Also, there would be people who are obese but metabolically healthy they would still be considered as metabolically healthy individuals. You may classify them as obese, but they are metabolically healthy. And then, of course, you'll have individuals who are uh, uh, obese and metabolically unhealthy. They will have, they could have more visceral than subcutaneous fat, hyperinsulinemia, presence of diabetes, dyslipidemia, inflammation, or sarcopenia, which is something that we are now beginning to identify more and more as, as a contributor even towards obesity and, and, and early type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. But having said that, even in the normal weight individuals, those who could have metabolic conditions, again similar diabetes, sarcopenia, inflammation, would be metabolically unhealthy and normal weight. So please understand both these situations that you could have somebody who is obese by the BMI classification but is metabolically healthy. You could have an individual who is normal weight but is metabolically unhealthy because of the comorbid condition or other features. And that's what is today called as the obesity mortality paradox, where we speak about normal BMI, metabolically healthy. This is the desired profile for one to have reduced fat, increased muscle, increased fitness, normal insulin sensitivity, and so on. Then you have an obese individual based on BMI, but still at present metabolically healthy, has good muscle, good fitness, some of the hyperinsulinemia coming in, but rest of the parameters normal. And then you have somebody with normal BMI who's metabolically unhealthy. You look at this individual, looks fine, but could have some chronic illness, could have muscle loss, excess visceral fat, reduced fitness, diabetes, inflammation, and so on. And then an individual who's obviously obese with uh, the presence of various comorbid conditions and risk factors, making this person metabolically unhealthy. So we need to glow, go beyond BMI and start looking at various conditions which may coexist. And which is why we do understand that BMI assessment uh, will have its own limitation. It doesn't measure body fat. So people with, with the same BMI can actually have difference based on their body fat in terms of their risk involved. It does not assess the presence of concomitant co uh, comorbid conditions or disease risk. BMI alone does not provide measurement of functionality. How much can a person move? How, how, how functional is, is that individual? The quality of life or other factors it does not take into mind even the mental health aspects, uh, whether it's there is depression and other things which are important today. Changes in BMI or waist circumference do not necessarily reflect improvement in overall health or functioning, and that's a problem. Somebody's BMI may come down, but that person may still not be very functional. It, it doesn't change the individual's risk factor. So BMI does have a lot of limitations, and which is why the need to move beyond BMI for the right assessment of obesity and which is, which is where this beautiful paper um, much earlier in 2009 was published by the work of Dr. Arya Sharma and Kushner that complementing the BMI with a simple disease-related and functional um, uh, staging system would, would, be, would be helpful. And that's where what came in was the EOSS, Edmonton um, Obesity Staging System. Of course, this is based on the work done by Dr. Arya and team from Edmonton, Canada. I believe now he's moved from there and, and lives in Germany where he continues to do his work in the field of obesity. What did the EOSS tell us? That you're going to be looking at three aspects. You're going to be looking at the presence of medical 
conditions, comorbidities, etc. You're going to be looking at the mental state of the patient, including presence of depression and other mental conditions, and then functionality. Does the patient functionality get offered? Does the patient have OSA and, and, and then not function much in the day? Does the patient have obesity-related arthritis and they cannot move much? So all these three aspects are considered in the staging system. So you had grades as based on the BMI, but when you look at the EOSS, let's understand that this is staging. And this is extremely important. And as Dr. Rajiv Chawla sir said that, you know, a lot of conversation that we're having is, is, is something that you do at the postgraduate or even undergraduate level, that we are going back to understand obesity and the changing concepts. And it's important that we understand the new staging system from stage zero, where you have all these absence to stage one, where you do not have problems with mental and functionality aspects, but there are some preclinical risk factors. Stage two, you have morbidities, diabetes, hypertension maybe. You have some moderate for, uh, mental aspect like depression coming in and moderate functionality getting affected. Moving on to stage three and stage four, where you would have uh, um, progress in, in terms of worsening comorbid conditions and mental and, and functional issues. Now, you're looking at QSS as the staging system when you use it to predict the mortality in cohort of people with over, overweight and obesity from the NANS3 data. Now, from the NANS3 data, if you look at based on the BMI in different overweight to class 3 obese patients, you do not see a huge difference in, in, in terms of their survival. But you start looking at that data again based on the EOSS grade staging, and you'll realize that there's a huge difference. So individuals who would belong to stage 2 and stage 3 clearly have poorer survival. And that's why it's important to identify these individuals and try and offer help rather than looking just at BMI, which may not give us the clear idea. Now, this is something which gives us a clearer picture of understanding the difference between BMI uh, 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 and, and the EOS staging. What this tells us that if you look at the NANS3 data, even if you look at the overweight population, which is 50 million in the NANS3 data, that if you're going to see just in the overweight population, you will have almost 47% of the patients which actually belong to US stage 2 and 10% population here belonging to US stage 3. If you had gone just by the BMI, you would have thought, okay, overweight, just overweight, no, no other obesity, not that much of an issues, and would have missed the aspect of, of the problems that this would plague such an individual with almost 48, 47 and 10 percent being in stage 2 and stage 3. And similarly, when you look at different classes of obesity based on BMI, you realize that they actually have higher percentage of people who may be in an advanced EOS stage and hence the need for us to, to look at the EOS staging system. How do you offer them? What kind of help? And so EOS is stage one, no risk factors, lifestyle modification. Stage one, you're going to talk about behavioral therapy. Stage two is where the disease factor comes in. So you're going to talk about medical management. And stage three and four of, of the USS obesity staging, you talk about both medical and surgical and start talking about offering surgical solutions to this management of obesity. Let's understand this further. For example, in our case one, you have 24-year-old physically active female, BMI is 32. No demonstrable risk factors, no functional limitations or mental health issues. If you go purely by BMI, she's class 2. But if you go by the US, she states zero obesity. By BMI, I would be much worried and I'll be putting her into a, a stage 2 obesity and, 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 and algorithms for the same. But if I go by US, she'll state zero. I just need to talk about some lifestyle factors here to this individual. Similarly, you see the case 2, 32-year-old female, BMI is 36 now, hypertension, sleep apnea, depression, class 3 by BMI, you go by US, this is stage 2 obesity and would clearly merit the benefits of obesity treatment. Another example, case 3, BMI is 54, patient has disabling arthritis, wheelchair, severe hypoventilation, fibromyalgia, generalized anxiety disorder. So every aspect of mental uh, uh, um, dysfunctioning and functional issues along with the disease would require aggressive obesity treatment, even maybe surgery if possible for such an individual. So let me summarize by saying that assessment of obesity with BMI just 
itself alone may not be sufficient to optimize treatment. The Edmonton Obesity Staging System is a simple disease-related and functional staging system as shown and would provide additional clinical information meriting what kind of treatment you need to offer to that individual, which may not be possible on the basis of just BMI. The treatment of obesity should be person-centric instead of just based on algorithms or which are, or which are BMI-based you need to take into consideration patient's mental status, patient's functionality, and then decide on the treatment to offer. So with that, let me stop sharing and hand it back to the chairpersons. To